What's going on everybody? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace your 3060 Zotac white twin edge fans to a black style fan. That's the only replacement fan they actually have, but I think they look absolutely fantastic because now it matches the riser from gprisers.com. Real quick, I wanna just recap this little uh, pointer that I made yesterday. I had a short saying, don't buy 18 gauge cables for uh, mining. I wanna correct that. I wanna say, don't buy cheap 18 gauge cables or don't pull too much power from these because if you split them more than once or whatever the case may be, you might end up causing a fire hazard. I mean, realistically, these things could have melted and that's extremely scary. So please guys, just get 16 gauge to feed from the uh, breakout board to the actual you know, splitter or whatever you're using or buy a quality 18 gauge wire. Like I can just tell that these are, uh, these are lighter and to be honest, they are probably not true 18 gauge wire. I just got them from a no name company on Amazon. So you gotta watch out for that. That's really the uh, pointer I wanted to bring forward to you guys because I didn't notice those were burnt or that breakout board was uh, actually discoloring until I had these all laid out on my table to take a peek at them. So we're gonna do a complete step-by-step -step video of how to replace these two white twin edge fans. As you guys could see, this one doesn't like to spin, but this one spins fine. It's mostly the big one that stops spinning on all my cards, which is weird, but either way, these ones now spin great and they look fantastic. So we're gonna be changing those. You're going to need a fan splitter where it has two females and one male because you're going to have to plug back in the LED bar at the top. Unless you don't care, then you don't need it. Totally up to you guys. It's just kind of extra money that you don't really need to spend. So I'll leave a link in the description below to where I got these fans. I actually had them ordered off uh, AliExpress for me. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so this is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide on how to replace these fans right here. As you can see, this one has a hard time spinning. When it was in the crypto mining garage, it literally just didn't move. This was the only one that was spinning on the GPU. So obviously we can't have that. It's not good for the cards. First thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a tool kit. I use the iFixit kit. This is not sponsored, by the way. This is just a fantastic tool kit that I am going to choose to use here in this video. So you're gonna need a small Phillips head tip and the screwdriver. The good thing about this is it's magnetic, so it actually pulls the screw out with you when you're using it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is undo the screws that actually hold the housing down. There's four of them, basically bottom of each fan and top of each fan. So you gotta stick the screwdriver between the blades and just unscrew it. Not too difficult. Again, the magnetic tip helps and also the magnetic pad on the actual iFixit kit is extremely helpful. As you can see, the other one's been removed right in there. Then we have one more there and there. So I'm gonna get in there and unscrew those. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew the three screws that hold the fans in. So same thing, just kind of go between the blades and unscrew those. All right, so all said and done, you're gonna have a total of 10 screws up on your mat here. Now what you're gonna do is basically just lift the housing and the fans and flip it up. So next thing we have to do is we actually have to remove this heat sink because if you could see the wires to these fans, they travel directly behind the heat sink and you cannot access these plugs without removing it fully. So I am going to lower this down and flip it over. You can do this in any form or fashion. You could undo these screws first and then do the fans. It, it really doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. So we're going to unscrew these right here. There is four total. Now we're just gonna grab the entire thing and flip it over. The last piece to the puzzle is the three screws right here. Holding on the face plate, that is actually holding the heat sink to the front of the card because nothing else holds it on besides those four on the back. So. Let's remove those. Okay, now we will, again, flip the cover. So what you're gonna do now is more or less put your hand or finger right here on the uh, actual back plate or wherever you can, and you have to separate the heat sink from the PCB. Little, little bit of pressure and it lifts off.
And as you can see, we have a thermal pad that actually got stuck to the uh, heat sink itself and the other ones pretty much stayed in place. All right, so these thermal pads, if they come off, they are uh, actually still okay to put back on. They did kind of a sloppy job here and it looks like this one's starting to break down. So I'm gonna wipe that off with some uh, alcohol. Honestly, I'm just gonna use a paper towel, but a microfiber uh, towel is probably best in this application. Just gonna put some on it right on the corner there. And what I'm going to do is just wipe the PCB right here. I just wanna get the, uh, the broken down oil that's on it off for the most part. All right, now that that's all set, I'm gonna take this thermal pad and I'm going to place it back where it was. Next thing, we need to clean off the actual memory chip. So same thing, alcohol on a paper towel and we're going to wipe and lift at the same time to get it clean. It takes a little bit to get this done, but I mean, it's, it's really nothing to it. This green part around the actual chip is more or less to catch the thermal paste if you have any uh, basically flow out of the uh, center there. Don't be too uh, nervous if you have a little too much or you think it's a little too much thermal paste because again, it will be caught. It's not a huge deal. All right, PCB's all clean. All right, so now I gotta do the same thing, clean off the uh, actual heat sink itself. A Little bit of alcohol and wipe off all the thermal paste. As you guys can see, it's like a pre-molded square. It's kind of like getting the, uh, the thermal paste from a CPU cooler pre-put on. Definitely don't recommend you guys using it. All right, so I'm gonna take the heat sink now that it's all clean. I peeled off the thermal pad that was actually still stuck on it and I put it back in place. I'm gonna put this off to the side for this moment. All right, so now you can see there are two plug-ins. This one on the right goes to the right fan or the bigger fan, and the one on the left goes to the left fan or the smaller fan. All right, so now the uh, PCB is all free from the actual front casing, so I'm gonna take this and put this off to the side as well. Now we have to deal with this. So if you can see right here, there are three screws. One, two, three and that holds on this Zotac gaming top. We need to unscrew those so we can remove it because the wires, if you guys can see, they're like pinched behind to hold them in place. All right, so those three screws are now removed. What you need to do is basically push up on this bracket because this is like 3M taped to the top. You just wanna do it gently until it dislodges. All right, so now that that's free, what we will do is separate the fans. So the big one, we don't need anymore. And the small one, we need to unplug from the light bar itself. And now that fan, we don't need anymore. And this is just the, uh, again, the light bar. We're gonna put that back on. But first, I'm going to go and clean all the dirt out of this. I'm just gonna rinse it off and wipe it down with a, uh, like a magic eraser, just to make it nice and uh, bright white again, I guess. And then we will put it back together. All right, so we're all clean for the most part. I wiped it all down. I actually just used a rag and some uh, alcohol. I couldn't find the magic eraser for whatever reason. I know it's around here somewhere, but I don't have time to look for it. <laughs> so we have the two fans that we're going to be installing. We're gonna lay the fans right there for now. This right here, again, the light bar, we are going to need one of these, basically a uh, fan splitter to get power to this LED if you want this LED on. If you don't, you guys can just leave this unplugged inside the housing. It's not gonna harm anything. But in this instance, I wanna plug it in because, I mean, what's the point of having LEDs if you're not going to uh, be able to look at them? All right, so you're gonna take the light bar, you're gonna feed it back through the square and you're going to plug it into one of the uh, female adapters on this splitter. Then we're going to plug in the small fan to the other side of the splitter. Unfortunately, these fans and this splitter, the cables are super long. So we have to do some cable managing behind the actual heat sink. So now the male end is going to plug into the front port on the PCB because it's for the smaller fan and for the LED. 
I don't think it really matters if you mix them up, but I'm gonna plug it back in the exact same way I found it because it's just good common practice. Now I'm gonna take this one, again, this fan, the wire is super long, but it is what it is. We're going to plug this into the second port on the PCB, which is the back one. It's the only other one available. So now what we can do is take these wires, however you see fit, we want to more or less, you need to have them riding straight up this way at you. So we need to somehow get these cables like cable managed into behind where these screw holes are. All right, so this like cable management usually takes a little while to get somewhat situated. It's not gonna be easy by any means. So you're gonna have to uh, take some time and do it, but you gotta try to tuck in the cables basically behind these screw ports. And what I do is I'll take the screwdriver and just help it push in, but you don't want to uh, push it into a point where you're like gonna pop the casing, you know what I mean, and strip the wire. You don't want anything to be exposed. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is the hardest part of this entire job, trying to cable manage these wires. It's absolutely like unbearable, it just stinks. Now what you wanna do here is basically push these wires just so they're kinda of like bent upwards, okay? Cause you're gonna have to put thermal paste on this and we're going to have to get the heat sink back on. So what I like to do, I'm gonna grab my thermal grizzly. This stuff I've noticed on these GPUs have dropped the temperature immensely. I reuse the old thermal pads because you don't need to replace them. I mean, at least I don't, they're not uh, in bad shape. You wanna put a single dot right here in the center. And then what I like to do is basically just kinda take the tip of the thermal grizzly and just kinda tap it around just to kinda spread it out a little bit. So in this application, you don't wanna go too crazy. I just wanna make sure that there is enough on here. I like to get that little dot all flattened out in the center. That way it can squish and it can go everywhere else, however it needs to. Again, you don't need any crazy amount. It's just one dot in the center and you smash it around. That's, that's what I do. You really don't need to do that. You can just leave it the dot in the center and it'll be good because once it hits this flat plate, it is going to evenly disperse with the pressure. So now what I'll do is I'll take the heat sink, make sure it's lined up the right way. These are the screws that need to screw into the face plate. We're just going to more or less kind of guide the first hole to where it needs to be. And then everything else should more or less fall in place. You guys just see that drop down. It should push right in place. Now that it's flat, okay, we have it flat down. What I like to do is take this and just rotate everything. So it's at least, you know, in place. Then you wanna take the front three screws and we want to get the front secure to the uh, heat sink. And then I like to put my thumb right on the back spot where the fan is and grab the housing. And I'm going to flip it over, but I'm not gonna put it down. I'm gonna hold my fingers under it and pinch with my thumb. Not a lot of pressure, just enough to keep it against the actual memory chip. And we're going to grab the big screws and we're gonna screw the heat sink to the PCB. And you're only gonna tighten it till it's snug. Once you get the first two caught, you can let go of the actual uh, unit. You don't have to hold on to it the entire time. But now what I like to do is basically start at the top, tighten one, and you just do a crisscross pattern, kind of like tightening your car tire. You never go one after the other, you want to do a crisscross. All right, so these wires are gonna be a huge pain in the butt. So right here on the heat sink, again, that little groove, you want to try to get the wire into it. All right, so now once you have the fans caught in the grooves and you pretty much have them where they're gonna sit, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna screw the fans in, cause why not? Typically, I usually flip the entire thing together and do it all at once, but in this application, I'm just gonna show you guys to do this first, cause it's probably easier to be honest. That way you can actually grab the entire fan and move it back and forth to mount it. So you only wanna get the screw somewhat tight. Not like super tight, but enough to hold it, if that makes sense. That way you can still wiggle it around to catch the other three screws. And you may have to push the extra slack of the wire back in that groove so this will spin freely. Now we're gonna mount the other one the same exact way. All right, so now they both spin freely, which is nice. 
Theoretically, we should be able to flip this over. We're going to have to push the wires to where we want them. Unfortunately, you might have to tuck some of these in down behind the heat sink. Whatever you have to do to get them out of the way, just do it. You're going to have to rotate the fan to get the housing in. And once it's in, you should be good to go. But you might notice right there, see how the wires are sticking up? Once we screw the housing in, then we can kind of tuck the wires to the left or the right. So let's get this uh, mounted fully. Then I like to go around and give them a little extra uh, tighten just to make sure everything's good. And you're good to go. So now, last but not least, we need to, again, cable manage these. So I know it's tough and sometimes it really is and there's nothing else you can do, but you just gotta kinda tuck these in the best you can. Sometimes you really don't have much to work with, but as long as they're not interfering with the actual plugs for the GPU or the fans, then you guys are fine, in my opinion. And that's it, all replaced. Everything's spinning freely, no issues. Let's plug it in and see how she works. Hopefully that thing lights up. All right, so I just grabbed server PSU. I got two cables. The riser that the uh, GPU now looks like is the white ones from GPURisers.com. If you guys haven't checked them out, go do so. All right, so we're gonna take this riser and we're going to throw it on the card so I can stand it up. Actually, you know what? I'll just put it face down because it doesn't matter. I'm gonna plug in the actual eight pin extensions because these cards have two eight pins for whatever reason. Then we're gonna take one of these cables, we're going to feed it into the splitter, and the other cable is going to go to the riser itself. And the moment of truth, it's lighting up, and the fans are spinning. What do you know? We have a perfectly fixed GPU. Even though that sticker is a little off center, it's still better than a ticking or a not spinning fan. So be honest. Do you actually think this looks better than the all white Zotac? Please let me know down in the comments below. I am pumped though, because it does match the GPU riser very well. I am gonna be changing all of these white GPUs to have black fans. As you can see, I got a 3070 running right here with my uh, normal test bench. It's right there. Zotac 3070, 62 mega hashes and 36C. Doesn't show the memory temp, but this thermal paste has actually improved the way this card's running because uh, it is not as hot as it used to be on the backside, which is crazy good. But yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys uh, appreciated this content. Hopefully this helped you guys out, maybe changing your uh, Zotac fans. If it did, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.